Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Software Development with C++. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about the text user interface with GDB. So up until this point, we've largely been using GDB like we would any other um, you know, system from the command line. So we you know, write a few commands, we get some output, and this you know, process just kind of goes back and forth. Now, it would be really nice if we had a way to continuously present some of the information that we're wanting to look at. So things like the lines of code that we're executing, maybe the assembly, or maybe even the register values. Now, fortunately for us, there is a mode within GDB where we can get a lot of this information just automatically presented to, the, to us uh, and have it automatically update as well. So it's a, it's a really nice way to have this data presented to us. And that's through this uh, text user interface, or TUI. So what we're going to be looking at today is just some basic navigation um, through a sample program right? using this text user interface. So let's go ahead and get started here. And the program that we're going to be looking at is one we've seen a couple times in the past that we've uh, been through with debugging here. Except this time we don't have any errors to debug. We're just going to be running through this program in GDB. So here, right, we have our simple program. All it is is a, a simple vector addition uh, you know, piece of code. So we start off by allocating some memory here for you know, a couple arrays of floating point numbers. We fill those arrays with some random numbers here. And then we go ahead and do vector addition here. So we add each element of A to the elements of B, um, or their corresponding elements, uh, rather, and then store the results inside of A. And then after we do all that, we just free the memory. So let's go ahead and run through this program, but using this text user interface. So we'll go ahead and quit out of here, and we'll compile this zeroerror.cpp, and we'll do it with O2 optimizations and also this dash G. So OK, we've compiled our application here. Let's go ahead and run this with GDB here. Right? So we'll just, just go ahead and start things up. Now, to open up the text user interface, uh, what we can go ahead and do is we can run uh, or press Control X, and then after that, uh, just the one key. And that opens up this nice user interface here. So you can see automatically it opened up our source file for us. And we can scroll up and down inside of our source code as well, right? So instead of having to type things like list to print out you know, sections of our source code, we have an actual window that we can scroll you know, up and down, left and right through, uh, just using our arrow, arrow keys. Now, if we want to change the focus of our window right to where we type in commands, we can, of course, do Control X, right? And then after we do that combo, you can just press the O key, right? And now we can uh, uh, you know, scroll up and down inside of our commands if we want to. Now, there's multiple different uh, layouts we can choose from. We don't have to just show our you know, high-level source code. So we can select the layout here. So we can do, say, layout ASM if we want to see our assembly. Um, and if we want to, say, split this um, you know, with our registers, we can do uh, layout uh, regs as well, right? And this will show us our registers. Um, you know, once we start running our code, right, it'll update this with our current register values. Now, we can also cycle through a number of these layouts by just doing Control X and then two, right? And so we can scroll through this multiple times, right, using that combo. So if I do Control X and two again, right, it takes me to assembly. Do it again, and now we see our source and assembly side by side. Do it again, and now we have registers in our source code. Do it again, now we have registers in our assembly, and so on and so forth, right? And now we're back around to um, right, our high-level source code. So let's go ahead and play around with this a little bit now that we're a little bit more situated in what we're doing here. So the first thing we can do is just you know go ahead and, and run start here to get to the start of main, right? And so you can see already inside of uh, you know, our, our very nice window up here, we have a little carrot that, or, you know, greater than sign that's telling us uh, exactly where we are in our program here and even highlights it on the right here. So it says that, you know, we're at the start of our program, we're at the very beginning of main here. Now, just like, you know, with our normal kind of GDP debugging, we can step through our program to different statements here, right? So here we're going over to a random device. So we're going to generate a random number here. And if we step through, it might even take us to other files here. So now it's taking us into this class random device where we're getting this, you know, random number from, right? So we can step through here a, a couple times and eventually it takes us back, right? And now you can see, you know, we're back to a different part of our main function here um, where we're now doing our dynamic allocation, right? For our two arrays here, A and B. Okay. 
So let's go ahead and re um, or, or move our focus back to the source code here. So we'll do Control X and O to highlight that window. And let's scroll down here and let's just set a breakpoint somewhere in a program. So let's skip past a lot of this initialization phase. So let's go ahead and jump right into where we're doing vector addition here. So we can set a breakpoint, um, say at line 24 here, where we're doing this a of i is equal to a of i plus b of i, right? And you can see that, you know, our, our window updates here and shows us that we have a breakpoint at this line here on line 24. Um, so that's a nice thing as well. And then we can go ahead and continue on, right, and, and get to that point in our code, right? So you can see we execute along and now we're inside of this loop, right? So we can do all of our normal things. So we could do things like, you know, print i, right, to see which iteration loop we're on, unsurprisingly, right? We jumped all the way down to the first iteration. So i is equal to zero here. Now, a lot of times when we're debugging, um, you know, particularly difficult issues, or we're trying to understand really what's going on at a low level, uh, we want to look at the values of registers as well as, um, you know, what actual machine instructions we're executing. So let's go ahead and cycle through and go over to our display, where we have our assembly and our registers side by side here. Right. And let's start stepping through a program, but instead of at the statement level, at the instruction level. And so we can do that with step i. So we're going to single step our instructions here. So you can see, right, you know, we still have our breakpoint here. So this is where we're actually breaking, um, you know, with that loop that we're doing. So let's actually go ahead and get rid of that. So we'll just do d to get rid of that breakpoint. Um, and you can see here we're in this pretty tight loop here where we're doing this vector addition. So every iteration of this loop, we're going to go ahead and load something uh, from this, you know, an address in register 12, right, at some offset, and store that in this XM0 register. Then we're going to add, you know, some value coming from, you know, the starting address R13 at some offset, um, and adding that to our value that we just loaded to XM0. Then we're going to store that result of that addition, that sum, right, into some offset from R12. Then we add four here. That's just going to be our four byte offset. We're you know, adding floats together, so floats are four bytes. So we're just moving on to the next element each iteration, right? And we have this compare statement to check to see if we're done with our loop. So let's go ahead and step through this a few times here. So we'll just go ahead and uh, do Control X zero a couple times. That way I can um, I can go ahead and use the arrow key up to you know run the step I command again. So we'll go ahead and do that. And you can see if we can step through these individual instructions here. And you can see when our register values change, they'll actually get highlighted in this top window here. So you see we did this add a 4 to RAX here. So you can see that RAX went from being 0 to 4, right? So we can step through this a few different times, right? So now we're back up to the top of the loop here. And we can step through it again. And you can see once we get past that add instruction again, RAX goes from 4 to 8, right? We added another four to that value here. Now to, you know, kind of understand what's going on here, right? We have you know, loading something at an offset of R12 and loading something at an offset of R3, R13 here, or rather adding, you know, some value that we loaded from an offset of R13 here with our value in X of zero. Um, what are actually at those two locations here, right? So you know, let's go ahead and just print out the base of our two arrays here so we can Go ahead and print out, you know, A is and, you know, where that's pointing and then where B is, right? So those are our two float arrays here. And we can see that, you know, if we go ahead and change our focus of our window here, you know, back to our, uh, you know, back to our top window um, and we go ahead and scroll down and look at what, you know, R12 and R13 are. So R12 is this, you know, bunch of fives, then a six, and then AEB0. And R13 is the same kind of thing, but ending in BEC0. We see that A is that AEB0, and we see that uh, B is that BEC0, right? So R12 is just holding our pointer to A, and R13 is just holding our pointer to B here. So when we do this move um, SS, right, from R12 here, we're really, really loading a value from A. And we're doing this add here with that value in XMM0 with some value from R13. This is where we're both loading that value from B and then adding it to the value we already loaded in from A, right? So that's really what our code is doing here, right? And we can see that going on at a very low level. Okay, so let's go ahead and exit out of here. So we can go ahead and take this back to say a single window. So just control X and then take it back to one. And then we can go ahead and change our layout here back to our source, right? 
And so you can see we're back at the top of this loop right here, right? Uh, where we're checking our loop condition. Now, if we want to just kind of fast forward through this loop, we can just run uh, the until command, and that will just kind of fast forward through our loops. So we can run until, and you can see that takes us through all of the in iterations of this loop, and we wind up at the last few code uh, piece of code we have, right? Just the freeing of our memory. And we can step through these as well, right? So delete A, delete B, and then finally our return zero, right? And then we start hitting things like, you know, destructors. And we can step through all of that, and then eventually um, our code ends up finishing, right? We're all done with our program. Okay, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for this time. That's just a different way we can view the output from GDB here. Uh, we can use things like the text user interface to you know, better visualize what's happening you know, at a low level inside of our assembly, what's going on with our registers, and even just have our source up on the screen at the same time as we're running commands, right? And in a more scrollable format. Uh, now, as always, I'll make sure to link this documentation for this GDB text user interface below the video. And you can find this or any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.